Hello my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Today we're going to kind of have a little discussion on Ed B. Scallon's wheel. Here I have a replica from Coral Castle. It's a motor block with 24 V-shaped magnets. This here's the inside of the magnets. Everything's encased in concrete. Everything's separated by a dielectric top and bottom of the magnets. So, um, what I wanted to talk about was on Ed Lee Scallon's wheel, when he left it, all these magnets were north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I just did it. Basically, I was in the process of charging these magnets and I was using two car batteries. Um, I got the positive and negative hooked up, them coming out of the negative there and the positive there. So I'm putting 24 volts into this PMH I have here. And what I do is um, hold up against the magnet, figure out which is which, hold it up like that. I got one end hooked up to the positive, I tap the negative on, and I charge the magnets. Well, I was getting ready to do that, and I didn't have the other side hooked up, and I put my compass up against the magnet, and I realized that I changed the magnet from, I knew I could change them from plus to south, north to south, but never really thought I could literally go any other direction with this, but hear me out. So, I have all these right now charged negatively. I made all the outside magnets a negative. Okay? Now you're probably asking yourself, Ed didn't leave it as a negative. Why is you why are you making it a negative? Why would you do that? Well I'll tell you why. By me making these all outside negative, I drove the center negative I drove the center to be positive negative positive negative positive negative 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 positive so here's my plan. One thing I noticed in my studies with the Scallon is that um, when you try to throw a lot of, uh, when you throw electric at these magnets, um, from some of the studies I did, that it doesn't add any more magnetism. It does nothing. But since I've been messing with the Tesla stuff, I'm dealing with static and I never really messed with static before and I'm thinking possibly that the static that comes out of my race car engine system here um, that I possibly could drive these magnets to be stronger by a static pulse from the inside and with this being a negative out here it's going to have a positive pull about it and it's going to pull itself to the iron pipe so that means every one of these spokes is going to have the job of pulling itself to the pipe 
Now you'll probably ask yourself such a question. Why wouldn't it, you know, how is it going to go past and just not stick? It's because the radius that's on this pipe allows it, one, to be drawn, but two, to release. And then by that time, the second one comes up to it and wants to pull towards it. So they're all taking their turns. Now, let's go back to another thing is, well, so here, turning the wheel becomes a pull towards the pipe. The outside negative field will have a neutral in the center and a positive, well, neutral in the middle and a positive in the center. You gotta think about how does a magnetic field formulate a center within itself to radiate a magnetic field and basically it can't. But what it can do is create two sides to have poles. So I am thinking that I put a primary of copper wire in here. I go ahead and put this around the copper primary. I go ahead and put back Ed's wheel and I create a static pressure that will go in the neutrals of the magnet to allow the magnet to become stronger so it'll pull itself to the pipe. And in return, I wouldn't need these PMHs except for I'm thinking that these are going to become part of the system because I'll need a choking device or another trans or another inductor in order to uh, balance out the system. So what I'm going to do is create a charging system out of this. And here's the setup. I have two car batteries are going to be in charge of the 15,000 volt transformer. So we're going to be using DC only here. So we'll come out of the two, the 24 volts, two car batteries. We'll do the same hairpin setup to where we're coming out of in, the batteries into the transformer, out of the transformer to a, uh, a, a spark gap. From the spark gap to my capacitors. One capacitor will be a positive, one will be a negative. The negative capacitor will be grounded out to the um, to the grounding pipe. The um, thick in here. There is going to be a connection that comes from the dielectric side of these capacitors to energize the block that in return will energize the center coil as a secondary and this aluminum here which will put out the static will be treated as a top load. Pretty cool huh guys? In return, I want to come back off the negative and I want to create a, a one of these other PMHs, a in, inductor to go ahead and charge the third battery. Now the third battery, I want to hook up in series with one of these um, double batteries so that the double batteries are being recharged from the series battery constantly. I'm going to have to play with this and kind of see where all that goes because 
um, there's some investigating that needs to be done there. I know I can't charge two batteries um, when I'm charging off a regular charging system because the weaker one will distort the whole thing. So there's going to have to be some type of something in between these that will allow um, a charge. I don't know. Got to think about that one. But leave some comments, guys. Uh, this is all leading back to my boy Edgley Scallon. Uh, the object here is to get the wheel to turn. Not pulling it from a magnetic strength from the outside, but creating an energy that will work with itself on the stuff that we know. Um, through this application, if all the magnets on the outside were a negative, it definitely creates a, a positive on the inside. And...